Imagine this for a moment. Just picture yourself drifting in this absolutely endless sea of darkness. And the closest sign of life, anything, is billions of light years away. It sounds like something straight out of a huge sci-fi epic, doesn't it? But what if I told you that some pretty recent discoveries in astronomy are hinting that, well, this might actually be our cosmic address? It is truly a mind-bending idea. Yeah. Uh, the Milky Way, our galaxy, it isn't just floating randomly out there in the cosmos. It really seems we're located, maybe nestled is the word, near the heart of this colossal, almost empty region. It's about two billion light years across. Two billion, that's staggering. It is, and scientists even have a name for it. They call it the local hole. Okay, local hole. But this isn't just, you know, a fun fact for space nerds, right? right? You're saying this discovery is actually causing major waves, like shaking up cosmology. Oh, absolutely. It's sending shockwaves, really. It challenges some very long held beliefs about the Big Bang itself, about how galaxies are scattered throughout the universe. And maybe most intriguingly, about how we measure the universe's expansion. Wow. Okay, so let's dig into that. That's our mission for this deep dive. Then why is this local hole such a cosmic game changer? Right, so for decades, a core idea in cosmology has been something called the cosmological principle. Okay, I've heard of that. It's the assumption that the universe is basically the same everywhere, if you zoom out far enough, like homogenous and isotropic. Exactly, mostly even, uniform in all directions. It was you know, a foundational concept. It made a lot of the math much simpler. So I can imagine that suggesting we live in a giant void must have met some serious resistance, especially with the cosmic microwave background, the CMB. You got it. I mean, wasn't the CMB basically exhibit A for a smooth, uniform, early universe? How could you have this massive hole coexisting with that picture? That was precisely the tension. Mm. The CMB shows this remarkably smooth baby picture of the universe. So finding a, well, a giant hole in that fabric, it seemed contradictory. It felt like finding a huge air bubble in what was supposed to be a perfectly mixed cake. But as our telescopes got better, more advanced, the data just became undeniable. These incredibly precise surveys, they didn't just show a lack of galaxy clusters nearby, which was strange enough, they also revealed this peculiar flow. Galaxies within this region seem to be moving outward, away from the center. Outward, from the void. Yeah, all pointing towards this enormous underdense area. Yeah. It just flew in the face of that neat uniformity we expected from the cosmological principle. And it sounds like this void isn't just messing with our maps of the universe. It's hitting something even more fundamental how we measure its expansion. You mentioned the Hubble tension. Exactly. The Hubble tension, it's uh, a real headache for cosmologists. Mm -hmm. Basically, we measure how fast the universe is expanding nearby using things like supernovae. And then we calculate the expansion rate based on the CMB, the very early universe. Mm -hmm. And the two numbers, they just don't agree. They don't match up. So where does the void come in? Well, this is where a really fascinating study by Indel Gannett comes into play. Gannett's proposal is, what if our location inside this giant void is the reason for the disagreement? What if it's the key? How would that work? Being in an empty patch makes things look like they're expanding faster locally? Sort of. His research suggests that galaxies inside the void do appear to be moving away from us and each other faster than the cosmic average. Faster? That feels backwards. Less stuff should mean less push, right? Ah, uh, but it's about the pull from the outside. Bannock talks about gravitational outflows. Uh -huh. Imagine the void as this huge, low-density bubble in the cosmic structure. The much denser regions surrounding the void areas packed with more galaxies and matter exert a gravitational pull on everything inside the bubble. Okay, so it's like the denser areas are pulling the stuff inside the void outwards. Exactly. It's a subtle but large-scale effect. This outflow, this pull from the outside, accelerates the movement of galaxies within the void. So from our perspective inside the void, it looks like the local expansion is faster than the overall average rate derived from the CMB. Wow, okay, that's that's huge. So it's not a new force, it's gravity working differently on these massive scales because of the density difference. Precisely, and the implication is radical. It means our local measurements might be skewed simply because of where we live. It forces us to question if gravity, or at least its effects on expansion, is truly universal in the way we assumed. Mm -hmm. It could change how we interpret everything, even back to the Big Bang. So if the rules of gravity, or at least how we measure its effects, might change depending on whether you're in a dense area or a void, that's a fundamental shift. It makes you wonder if our whole picture of gravity needs an update. And that line of thinking naturally leads us toward 
alternative theories that are getting a fresh look. Huh. One prominent one is modified Newtonian dynamics, usually called MOND. MOND, right. That's the one that suggests maybe we don't need dark matter. That's the core idea. See, traditionally, when astronomers saw galaxies spinning way too fast for the amount of visible matter they contained, the explanation was dark matter, this invisible stuff providing extra gravity. The standard explanation. Right. But MND proposes something different. It suggests that maybe Newton's laws of gravity, or rather Einstein's general relativity, which encompasses them, behave differently at very, very low accelerations. Low accelerations, like you'd find in the outskirts of galaxies or maybe inside these giant voids. Exactly. In places where the gravitational pull is extremely weak, MONND suggests gravity might be intrinsically stronger or act differently than we expect. If MOND is correct, it could potentially explain those fast galaxy rotations without needing any invisible dark matter. So why hasn't MOND taken over if it potentially solves the dark matter issue? Well, the standard model, the Lambda CDM model, with dark matter and dark energy has been incredibly successful. It explains a huge range of observations, from the CMB to large-scale structure formation. MOND has had more trouble matching all those observations simultaneously. Right. The existence of these enormous voids and some strange things we see within or near them, they are providing new testing grounds and maybe new support for ideas like MOD. Strange things? Like what? We'll take the El Goro Galaxy Cluster. The thing is a monster. It's far more massive and seems much more developed than it should be, according to standard models, given how old the universe was when it formed. Finding such an extreme structure, potentially interacting with the dynamics of a nearby void, really puts pressure on the standard picture of how cosmic structures are supposed to grow. It makes you question if the environment, like a void, plays a bigger role than we thought. Okay, so MOND is one way to rethink gravity, but what about Einstein's theory itself? General relativity, that's our best description of gravity. What does it say about these voids? That's a great question. General relativity tells us mass and energy curve space-time, and that curvature is what we experience as gravity. Right, more mass, more curve. Exactly. But what happens in a void where there's dramatically less mass and energy? Does space-time behave differently? Are the equations perhaps simplified in a way that reveals something new? Or maybe more complex? It's an area of active research. Could these voids be natural laboratories for testing the limits of general relativity under extreme low density conditions? And connecting this back to the very beginning, the Big Bang had that period of rapid expansion, inflation, right? Which supposedly smoothed everything out. It did, theoretically. Inflation was supposed to iron out most of the wrinkles from the very early universe. But the very existence of these huge voids, these massive under dense regions, suggests that maybe the smoothing wasn't quite as perfect as we assumed. So the voids are like leftover imperfections from inflation. Perhaps, or maybe they originate even earlier from the quantum realm. Just moments after the Big Bang, the universe wasn't perfectly uniform. There were tiny, random energy fluctuations, quantum fluctuations. Like tiny ripples on a pond. A good analogy. Those ripples were the seeds of all future structure. Where the ripples were slightly higher, denser, matter eventually clumped together to form galaxies and clusters. Mm. But in areas where those initial quantum fluctuations were perhaps a bit weaker, less intense, maybe less matter accumulated over billions of years. Leading to these vast stretches of relative emptiness, the voids. It's a plausible link. It suggests voids aren't just random gaps, but are perhaps a natural consequence of the initial quantum state of the universe. They could be telling us something fundamental about those very first moments. So these voids aren't just empty stages then, they're active players, or at least unique environments for studying the universe. Absolutely, they're unique natural laboratories. And we have tools to probe them, like gravitational lensing. Light bending around massive objects. But how does that work for empty space? Well, light from very distant galaxies has to travel through or around these voids to reach us. The way its path is bent, or perhaps less bent than expected compared to passing through denser regions, can give us clues. It helps us map the distribution of mass, including dark matter, both inside and around the voids. And it might even test how space-time itself is structured in these low-density regions, potentially revealing hints about dark energy, too. Stepping back from the specific physics, what does this discovery, this idea of living in a void, do to our overall picture of the cosmos? It fundamentally challenges that comforting image of a smooth, uniform universe. It suggests the universe is more like a, a cosmic patchwork quilt. A patchwork? Yeah, a tapestry woven with dense threads of galaxy filaments and clusters interspersed with these vast, empty patches, the voids. 
It's much less homogeneous, much more structured, and, well, lumpy than the simplest cosmological principle suggested. This forces cosmologists to reconsider those basic assumptions about uniformity, about isotropy, the idea that the universe looks the same in all directions. Maybe it doesn't, at least not as perfectly as we thought. And that has some pretty profound, almost philosophical implications too, doesn't it? About life, about contact. It really does. If galaxies and potential life-bearing planets within them are mostly confined to these cosmic islands, these filaments and clusters, and these islands are separated by these truly immense oceans of emptiness, well, it changes the picture. It makes the distances seem even more daunting. Exactly. The chances of civilizations making contact or even becoming aware of each other across these voids might be dramatically smaller than we'd imagine even in a uniform universe. That cosmic silence we often talk about. Maybe it's not just about distance, but about the very structure of the universe, the vast emptiness baked into its fabric. So we've covered a lot of ground here, from the basic idea of the local hole to shaking the foundations of cosmology, Hubble tension, M-O-N-D, even the echoes of the Big Bang. It turns out our cosmic neighborhood might be this giant void. What does this actually mean for you or how we see ourselves in the universe? It's a powerful shift in perspective, oh, isn't it? It really is. This deep dive shows that these huge voids aren't just data points. They're invitations to look beyond what's familiar, what's comfortable. They force us to question not just the mechanics of the universe, how it expands, how gravity works, but maybe our own place within that grand, intricate structure. Are we yeah. just sort of drifting alone in a cosmic desert? Or are we perhaps just starting to glimpse the true complexity, the hidden patterns that connect everything, even across these unimaginable gulfs of emptiness? Makes you think. <laughs>